Good morning and happy, oh, oh, I almost said Wednesday, happy Thursday to you, sweet friends. Come on in, my name is Tracy Campbell, here to inspire you with some vintage, primitive, country handmade crafts and home decorating ideas. If you love those things, then I'm your girl. Come on in and let's get to crafting this morning. We are going to be doing a scrappy pumpkin. Scrappy. <laughs> Meaning we're getting together any kind of scraps, trash, or garbage that you can find, and we're turning it into a pumpkin today. But when we are finished, you won't ever guess <laughs> that it's made from trash, right? That's the best kind of crafting to do is take something and uh, take nothing and make it into something amazing. So come on in here. Good morning, Miss Cheryl. Good morning, Belinda and Patty. Miss Joy, so excited you're here. Listen, you guys, you know, crafting, we craft a season ahead. So right now we're still at the end of, we're ending the days of summer but we are all crafting for fall getting ready for fall and that's why you see so many creatives and artists and crafters doing things for fall now and getting us ready for the crafting season we got to get these ideas out to you now so that you're ready to decorate and um, enjoy the fall season when it gets here if you missed this week's earlier this week we had a little scrap wood scarecrow, you guys. It turned out so cute. <laughs> turned out so cute. Put it on. I put him on a little uh, barn wood base. I actually made him a little stand, but you can actually make him into a little hanger. You can scale this to any size you want. You could even make these into some adorable fall tree ornaments if that's your thing. Uh, come on in. Good morning, Miss Brenda. Hello, Miss Pam. But I thought it turned out so cute. I had to show you uh, this this morning. And if you missed the replay, it is on my page and also on my YouTube channel for replays whenever you're ready to watch, you guys. So come on in here. I do want to let you know if you are not getting notifications, you might want to sign up for my Telegram channel <laughs> um, because that's where I send reminders of when I'm going live or when I do surprise lives like today. This was totally not planned, uh, just planned in the last... I don't know 12 hours 24 hours I don't know <laughs> so I didn't give much notice but my telegram uh, subscribers did get a notification this morning that I was going live today so if you want those telegram notifications down in the comments if you just type in all together exclamation point telegram then it will send you a link to join my telegram channel how nifty is that and if you don't do telegram if you just would like to make sure that you're Facebook notifications are on. You can do the same thing, only just type in exclamation point. I don't know why I feel that word is so funny. Exclamation mark. <laughs> Notify. If you type that all together, that will make sure that your notifications for my page are turned on. How nifty is that? It's a new Facebook feature, you guys. We're just giving it a try and we're going to make it work for us. <laughs> How are you guys? We are scrapping together a pumpkin today. We're going to use pumpkins, pit berries, scrappy fabric, and I think we might use all kinds of things. Let's get the hot glue gun uh, plugged in because we will be using hot glue today. Good morning, Miss Corey from Creative Roots Art, Miss Pat from Unique, my sweet Canada friend. How are you? Oh, Miss Pat, I tell you. Oh, hold on, I had to reach over for that plug in. I have not been a morning person the last several weeks, and I've been missing you. <laughs> I've been missing you, my early morning peeps. There we go. Somebody typed in excited mark, exclamation mark, uh, notify, all one word, and they made sure that their notifications for my sweet home living are turned on. Who was that? Let's see. Let's see who tried it out. Uh, will it show me? I don't know if it'll show me. Miss Corey, she tried it out. And so it's, it's a Facebook uh, feature that it's rolled out and I'm just giving it a try to see if it works um, but I've tested it and it seems to be working so how nifty is that all right you guys I told you we were scrapping together a pumpkin and when I say scrapping I mean scrapping we are pulling together scraps we're using a drink mix container <laughs> good morning Miss Barbara she put in exclamation mark telegram um, Make sure, doo, 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 I don't know what it's doing. There you go, Miss Barbara. Uh, uh, yes, exclamation mark telegram. All one word in that will give you the link to my telegram channel. How cool is that, you guys? Woohoo! I love when features like that work. All right, so we're using this. Now, fair word. 
you all know that I keep my patriotic decor up until the very end of summer. So as you see behind me, this is my little primitive jelly cupboard is what I call it. And um, I have it, you know, still have my patriotic decor. Now I'm needing to slowly start swapping out and getting ideas for what I'm going to put in there for fall. And today's idea is going to take the place of this little feature right here. I believe anyway this let me grab the cords oh my chair must be on the cord how convenient there we go um, this was a vintage colander you can go know that I love using vintage finds right and so this is a vintage star colander and then that cool and this is another drink mix container that I've repurposed into a can light did this for um, our patriotic decor put a little printable on the inside isn't that isn't that cute dressed it up at the top and that is that has been the little side feature of my little jelly covered table here um and so i need to swap this out for fall so the idea that i'm using today will take this little object's place whenever i start putting up my fall decor uh thank you so much you all are hopping on to my telegram channel that is amazing so glad that that feature is working so let's stick that right back over there if i can do it come on <laughs> I about knocked the whole thing off right before I started my live. <laughs> I thought, oh my gosh, please no, please no. Thank you, Miss Ashley, for those stars. I appreciate you, friend. So thankful for those of you that send stars. All right. So what I'm going to do with this drink mix container, we are well, we're just going to rip the label off. Now, if you don't do lemonade drink mix containers, what can you use? coffee containers there's all kinds of containers you could probably even use the same idea with a jar uh, but there's lots of containers oatmeal containers chip like pringles containers oh goodness the, like there's all kinds of uh, formula baby formula would even work i think those come in containers too so think outside of the box okay uh, Miss Nancy, make sure you put the exclamation mark in front of the word telegram, put it all together, and then it'll send you the link, okay? Um, this is what we're starting with, and I love these containers, you guys. Love them. Uh, because you can really transform them into some amazing things. And it's just cardboard, okay? And that does have a metal bottom and a metal ring at the top. But we're going to transform this into a scrappy primitive pumpkin. That's the plan anyway. We are going to start with, I'm thinking, I thought about doing some chip or um, some crackle, but I don't think we're going to today. For the sake of time, I think we're just gonna go with um, just a good primitive shade of orange. Now, when I say primitive, if you are new or not familiar with primitive style decorating, it's a good mix between vintage, country, and farmhouse. All of those things kind of combined um, with some earthy type colors, okay? So like neutral shades, but if you use color, they have a depth to them and in a sense that deepens them and makes them a little bit more earthy, if you will. So think of shades of um, earth colors, uh, mustards and browns and blacks, um, lots of cream tones, nothing super, super bright, okay? Now, I am going to need quite a bit of orange paint. I hope I'm not ruining this right now. Um, I didn't quite have enough of my favorite orange acrylic color. So let me show you. I'm just using a mix of oranges, you guys. Nothing fancy. Now, if your oranges are too bright, you can darken it with a little bit of brown paint. Um, or... I like to sometimes use some instant coffee granules. Can you guys even see what I'm doing here? Let's tilt this down just a tiny bit. Um, yes, Miss Pam, I bet a laundry con uh, laundry detergent container would probably work good. Um, just keep in mind that if you use uh, a plastic container of sorts, that you will probably want to use a form of chalk paint to cover your canister okay now since mine is cardboard i don't quite have to worry about that so much i was going to reach for something i don't even know what it was oh 
coffee grains. <laughs> um, you'll want that chalk paint so that it will adhere to a glass jar or a plastic container. But since mine is cardboard, I don't quite have to worry about that. It'll soak in and uh, it'll stick really good. Good morning, Miss Jackie. Good morning, Miss Karen from Nevada. I love when you guys tell me where you are tuning in from. I appreciate you so much for being here this morning. This was a surprise, a surprise live this morning. Um, okay, now I'm shaking up my coffee grinch because I am going to add, I want this to sort of be like a paint wash. I don't want it to be super, super bold and a thick, a thick orange coating, if you will. I want it to be almost like a wash, okay? I wanna be able to see some of that cardboard a little bit. And we will probably even grunge it up a little bit more. It's all about applying layers of color. And um, the first layer is just gonna be this, um, this paint. But this paint is really thick. And when I add those coffee uh, grounds, those instant coffee crystals rather, um, it makes it a little bit thicker. So all I'm gonna use is my coffee grunge mixture. I use this stuff for all kinds of things, you guys. It smells amazing and it's perfect for fall. It's coffee cinnamon and vanilla mixed with some water. The exact measurements and recipe are pinned at the top of my Facebook page if you need that recipe. It's also pinned at the top of my Telegram channel. For those of you that are on my Telegram channel, and if you're not, just go ahead and type in exclamation mark and the word Telegram all together and it, my, the little Facebook chat bot will send you the link to where you can make sure that you are on that telegram notification channel okay so i just poured a little bit of that coffee mixture right in there okay and it thins it down and it's going to make it a little bit more of a washy type but it also dulls down the color tone dims it down to a little bit darker good morning from ohio miss ellen how are you thank you miss denise how are you miss brenda okay now we're just going to go on you know i could Let's try something. This is experimental too. <laughs> I'm gonna take some of this coffee grunge and I'm gonna go over it first. And what that will do is kind of, it will um, dampen that cardboard so that it won't soak up the paint quite so quickly. It'll dampen it and give us a good base. Not only that, can you smell? It smells amazing. <laughs> smells amazing, you guys. I'm telling you, if I could just like, make a candle out of this it'd be perfect put it in a little simmering pot you know back in the day i, I don't i remember when i was in college i had a simmering pot i don't know if they even still make or, or sell simmering pots but it's kind of like a tart warmer only it's for liquid i bet if you put this coffee grunge in a simmering pot it's sort of like a mini crock pot if you will i bet it would smell up your house we need to try that <laughs> Miss Bonnie from North Carolina, we are making a scrappy pumpkin today. A scrappy pumpkin out of scraps. <laughs> Garbage, trash scraps, anything you got. All right, let's 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 wash this orange on. Yeah, this is gonna be, this is gonna be cute. Okay, now, if you, I should have rested the rim, that metal rim down there. I might have to rust that later. To, I don't want that bright silver rim showing. Uh, that won't quite match our primitive look, will it? Um, where was I going? Totally lost track of my brain here for a second. Maybe it'll come back to me. Um, oh my goodness, that's going to bug me. What was I saying? <laughs> I don't remember. Good morning, Miss Donna from Morgantown, Illinois. Girl, you are not far away from me at all. Not far away at all. If you are familiar where um, Owensboro is, Owensboro, Hartford, Beaverdam area, yep. Morgantown is not far. Okay. You like the color? Good. And, and if it's still, too, it's, it, it always shows up brighter on my camera, you guys. I think it's because I have the bright lights, makes that color like pop. But, um, even after it dries, you can apply more of the coffee grunge mixture over top and that will dull it down and prim it up for you, okay? Now, if that orange is too, oh, I know what I was gonna say. You could turn this into a little jack-o'-lantern. 
and it came back I knew thank you thank you thank you it did um, sometimes my brain does work um, if that orange is a little too bold just take let's see what can we take let's take a little bit of this coffee grunge and use it sort of as a wipe away I put just a little bit of the coffee grunge under there to kind of dampen my paper towel but you could turn this into an adorable little jack-o-lantern if you do Halloween decor yeah that would be cute okay I'm just wiping it back a little bit I want some of the streaks to show I want a little bit of that that brown to kind of shine through a little bit too because I'm wanting this to look like an old can okay and this paint might actually work just fine along this rim okay all right that's what we have so far now let's give it a quick dry um, because we will apply um, some more grunging techniques on top to really get that look now while I'm thinking about it let's let this let's let this kind of dry for a second let's prop something under there okay here's what we have for the top here's the lid I'm not gonna use this same lid thank you so much for the stars I don't know who sent those I missed it um, you've seen the Sun yes the Tide Pods yes you could do the Tide Pod containers or you could use a coffee um, a coffee tin you could also use um, baby formula containers oatmeal containers um, anything you can think of you guys like look you could even use something like this probably as well uh, but I my family uses this lemonade drink mix and I turn I turn these containers into all kinds of things um, here's one of the really uh, popular ones that's cornmeal container isn't that crazy that is the lemonade drink mix container I spray painted it grunged it and then applied a label and that sits in part of my decor you never know that that is a drink mix container, would you, right? And then I turned this into a little uh, shadow can light for uh, patriotic for 4th of July summer decor. But I love using these containers. And you, they, I mean, it's something that you would typically throw away. Thank you, Miss Elizabeth. Thank you. We're fixing to deck this out for fall. So that's what I'm working on is all of these little patriotic summertime pieces. I'm making fall replacements <laughs> to uh, put in place of those. All right. I forgot to bring an ink pen or did I know I got one well all right so I'm not going to use this container lid that came with it okay I want my lid to be a little bit bigger than my pumpkin I think I think I don't know we're just going with it right <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a lid out of contain or out of cardboard I just got a scrap piece of cardboard right here and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace the lid on on my cardboard okay I'm thinking this is what I'm gonna do you never know hey creatives can change their mind at the last minute you know hey Miss Linda how are you so excited you're here so when I go to cut this out I'm not gonna want it to be perfect I mean you know it, it's a scrappy pumpkin we want it to do look scrappy um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a rough circle around the edge. I'm going to allow a little bit extra because I want it larger than my, can, my the top of my can. Okay, so we're just going to do a rough cut. I'm just going to eyeball it. About a, I don't know, three quarters of an inch extra around that circle that we drew on there. Let me cut off okay I had to get that big piece off because that was like whew, getting in the way okay let's cut this out and see what we got here we go now this little box had a sticker on the back okay so I kind of like mm, it's a little big let's cut it down a little bit <laughs> Sometimes you can plan it all out in your head, but you just don't know what it's going to look like until you start putting it together. I know I'm not the only one that feels that way, <laughs> right? <laughs> Cut it down. 
it's getting there it's getting there I just cut off a little bit too much so maybe like a quarter of an inch extra would have probably been been okay all right round this off I like that so you can see a little bit how much overhang not not a whole lot but a little bit okay I'm gonna paint this with that same orange color that we used on the canister um, let's see what kind of canister am I using I am using a powdered lemonade drink mix container okay um, I use them for all kinds of things you guys uh, thank you so much miss Pam for those hearts I appreciate that so very much um, we're gonna use this side and I I'm not even gonna worry about this rough edge showing I think that just adds more character but if you worried about that you could line it with a little bit of um, like jute string twine um, a little bit of um, roping or a ribbon you do you okay this is to give you the idea and for you to run with it there'll be so many creations out of this because it's something that we all have we can find right we don't like to do anything fancy around here we keep it simple we keep it simple around here for everybody. Work just gets in the way, Miss Lisa. I know what you're saying, girl. All right, I do wanna kinda of make sure that my brush strokes are kind of all going in the same direction before I dry it. Now, if you create something like this, I would encourage, I would love for you to share your photos over into my crafting and decorating group. Check it out. I can send the link to you in my Telegram channel. Uh, or you can search crafting and decorating with my sweet home and it'll find the group for you and you can post your photos in that group and sometimes I'll find one and I'll share it on my page thank you Miss Teresa for sprinkling us out I appreciate you you think you'll use a powdered chocolate milk yes that would be perfect Deanne yes and you could scale it to whatever you want you know small version big version yeah okay now for the stem we have some options here and I wanted to uh, get your opinion on this honestly I'm gonna I am gonna paint I'm gonna go ahead and paint the bottom it didn't take two seconds for it to dry and I would like for it to be a finished looking piece so that's what we're gonna do um, but you could turn this into a, an adorable jack-o-lantern too you know just use a utility knife and cut you out um, the little face on one side of your jar and you know what you could do make it double-sided one side could be a jack-o-lantern the other side could just be a pumpkin that way you could use it all the way up through Thanksgiving good morning Miss Carolyn so excited you are here as well um, good morning Miss Barb telegram channel Miss Barb okay Facebook has a new feature you guys it has its own little chat bot that helps me out so if you want my telegram link all you have to do as you're watching this video down in the comments type the word all one word you're gonna type in the exclamation mark and then the word telegram all together no spaces and it will send you um, the telegram link is that not nifty it's amazing and if you want to do the same thing to make sure that your Facebook notifications are on for my page all you got to do is the same thing exclamation mark and put the word notify all together no spaces and that will send you make sure it will automatically I guess turn your notifications on making the stem out of rusty wire that is a thought now i will probably go over that let's let's give it a little base another coat of some coffee grunge um i have a vintage spool that we could use as a stem um i also have i have some wire that's kind of coated in like um i guess it's wrapped in like some kind of greenery type coating which is really cool because it kind of reminds you of a real stem I'm going to show you guys that here in just a second um, oh, I love that coffee grunge you guys I'm like addicted to the smell okay so where did I put that oh it's over here let me show you this wire I love this wire for this thought so here's the, like a vintage spool we could stain this a little bit grunge it up and that could be the lid or the, the stem rather I have a smaller version too I didn't quite know what scale we would want to do that on um, I need this coffee grunge to dry and it's gonna be a little streaky I don't want it to be totally streaky 
I mean, I'm okay with some staining effects, but I don't want I don't want there to be streaks and stains. So I'm just taking this scrap towel, paper towel that I had. I'm just blotting it. And ooh, there you go. And the light's not shining on it. You get a little bit better idea of what it looks like. Oh, Nelly. <laughs> we got a mess going on and I did not bring any baby wipes to the craft table today. So let me show you this wire that I was talking about. Okay, so look at this wire, you guys. It's pretty amazing. And I've had this in my stash. I think I grabbed it at Hobby Lobby, honestly. Another idea that you could use, you know that brown packing paper that comes in like your packages? That would be totally amazing and perfect to use. You could tw twist it up, make it look into like a, a, a vine, sort of, twist it, um, and you could spiral it, start spiraling it and twisting it as you go, okay, to make a really cute little stem. This wire, take a look at that. Is that not cool? <laughs> it is wrapped, oh, like there you go, my messy hands there. It's wrapped in a green, um, I don't really know what it is, to be honest. It's just a green something. <laughs> it kind of looks like it's wrapped in some jute twine, honestly, but it has a green color to it. What I thought about doing, so with these drink mix containers, they come with something that looks like this. I thought about hot gluing this on there and then taking this and wrapping it all the way around till I cover it up and then I could take my stem up over this a little bit and kind of would help hold its shape. Now the, my only problem with that is is it might be a little time consuming to wrap it. If you want to do something like that you could go for it. I think for the sake of time today, I think I'm going to go with one of my little spools. Um, I just don't know which one. That looks cute. That's a small one and this is a little bit bigger. That's almost too big, I think. Um, the other option is I have two of the small ones. I could do that. We're going to kind of zhuzh it up up here at the top. I think I'm going to go with the small one. I think I'm going with the small one. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Deborah. How are you? Uh oh, I'm melting stuff over here. All right. <clears throat> I kind of need this to have a little bit darker of a color. I would probably put a little bit of uh, antiquing wax on this for the sake of time. I don't have any time, extra time, so we're not going to do that. But I will darken that up later because it's a little too bright of a wood tone for me. Okay. Now, I have a sweet follower friend that sent me a package of some adorable cutouts and some um, falk pie cutters. Thank you so much. I need to shout her out today, Miss Teresa Dunahy. I don't know if she's watching today, but Miss Teresa Dunahy from Salem, Illinois, sent me an amazing package. <laughs> and I didn't even know it was coming. Uh, some amazing wood cutouts. And... Um, some really cute little primitive shapes, little hearts. Um, let me just show you. We're not going to use a heart on our pumpkin today, but how cute is that? Ah, so cute. That would be cute on our little primitive snowman. Uh, and then she sent me some little bird cutouts, which kind of remind me of a crow. Now, you know, fall and primitives, crow go hand in hand, right? So I'm thinking, thinking on my pumpkin. I'm thinking, I know it's backwards for you guys. I'm trying to look at it here. I'm thinking I'm going to paint this black. I might just apply it to the front of this canister. I don't know. I don't know. We're just going to go with it and see. We don't know how it's going to turn out. Let's, I do know that I want black on it because I just need a solid black coating on there. Um, thank you, Miss Terry. How are you, sweet lady? I hope you're doing good quick quick coat of black paint on this little crow it doesn't have to be a crow you could turn it into a cardinal whatever you want for your projects but i thought this would look cute with a pumpkin and to me it screams primitive and country so that's what we're going with 
All right. Oh, I've got a hair tickling my nose. All right. This chalk paint is super thick, so I can get it on and it covers really well. Okay. I want to make sure that all those little creases, those little cutout notches in between his feet are covered. And I, I'm going to do both sides because this little canister can be viewed from all angles. And then that way, if I ever decide to take it off and repurpose it, use it on a different project, it's already good to go no matter what side I'm using. And I just stuck my hands all in the wet paint on the other side. <laughs> We are getting messy here today. All right. Quick dry. With the drying tool. Here we go. <clears throat> We're going to use a little bit of Excelsior. Now you could use, I don't know, Spanish moss might look really cute as well. Oh my goodness. Excuse me. Um, Excelsior might look really cute as well. Uh, we need a little primitive star. But we're doing good on time. Whew, I was in a little bit of a rush thinking we were short on time, but I think we're doing good. We're going to pull it together, I think. Um, hey, Miss Rachel, how are you? Thank you, Miss Ruthie. You're new. So happy you're here. Big warm welcome to you. Let us know where you're watching from. If you are not familiar with the group Craft on the Clock, this is airing. This is cross streaming over into the Craft on the Clock group on Facebook where they have live crafting. Monday through Friday, early morning till late at night, and um, even overnight, if you are awake and can't sleep and you love watching crafting videos, you can head over there and check out the replays that are in the featured section over there. We love seeing you guys over in the Craft on the Clock group. Love our friends over in the Craft on the Clock group. Thank you, Miss Kathy. I appreciate you, friend. This one was a little bit different today, and this was kind of a, a last minute idea. And you all know that I like things that are kind of primitive and rustic, country, charmish. <laughs> this is fitting right in there. Uh-oh, somebody. All right. Somebody typed in exclamation mark and the word notify, all together one word. And that made sure that their notifications are still turned on for My Sweet Home Living on Facebook. So excited. So excited that little chatbot is working. And then that's so cool. So nifty. Thank you, Miss Karen, for sprinkling this out. Awesome. Miss Karen typed that in. Will there really be? Yes, absolutely. The replays are always here on my page and they're also available on YouTube later um, as well. Okay. Now, I think my hands, my hands are dry. Okay. I don't have to worry about getting that on anything. Okay. I need a little primitive star cut out, you guys. Now, a little primitive star, it, it's a little bit... Um, It's a little bit elongated, if you will. I feel like I might need to draw this out <laughs> before I start cutting. Where did my ink pen go? Well, oh well, where did you go? Here we go. All right, let's just freehand. I'm not good at drawing stars, you guys. I wish I had a reference. <laughs> here, I've got a star right here I can look at possibly. Um, let's see. I am not good at freehanding stars, but that's okay when it comes to primitive things. Oh, wrong angle. <laughs> good thing I decided to draw this out first before I started cutting. We would have been sitting here all day. Okay, primitive stars are a little wonky, but they're also a little bit taller more so than they are wide, if that makes sense. Okay, I think I've got it the way I like it. So now I'm just kind of darkening the lines that I want to cut. And we're gonna paint this yellow, like a real pretty golden primitive mustard yellow. So we're gonna have a crow, we're gonna have a star, and this pumpkin all fitting together out of scraps you guys scraps 
we keep it simple around here and try to give you ideas with things that you can use from around your home. Don't have to go out and buy anything. Use what you have. Okay. And you have so many things at your fingertips. It's all a matter of opening up your mind and thinking about those things in a different way. All right. Now, if you have a wooden star cut out, you could totally skip this step. <laughs> if you don't, find something to cut it out of. And we all have cardboard, you guys. I know we all have cardboard. <laughs> we all have cardboard. All right. There's our little wonky primitive star. Didn't turn out too bad, did it? All right, so now we're gonna give this a little coat of some, uh, I don't know what this is color, yellow ochre? It's just a folk art color, which I kinda like folk art shades of color because they're, they already have that primitive hue to them, okay? Now, of course, we're gonna add a little bit of coffee grunge to it to kind of give it a little bit of texture and a little bit of more depth to color. And that coffee grunge will just kind of, it, it kind of molds all of your, not molds, molds is not, it kind of just tints all of your shading to kind of coordinate, if that makes sense. I'm just putting, let me show you what I did. On my plate here, I just, well, my coffee grunge is running everywhere. In that yellow I put on my plate, I dipped a little bit of that coffee grunge in there, and I'm just going to swirl it around. It thins it a little bit. And then it also puts a little bit of cinnamon in there and then also has the coffee and the vanilla scented in there. Real subtle smell, not anything overpowering. So we're just gonna paint over that. We're gonna paint that cardboard cut out. Yes, we are. And it's gonna look so cute and scrappy, country and rustic. Now, you might need, depending on how thin you dilute your paint, you might need more than one coat to get the coloring on there that you want, okay? Now for this, I'm not gonna worry about painting the back side, but I do wanna make sure that the edges are, all have color on them, okay? Now we've almost got all of our little features ready, okay? Let's give this a quick dry, and then I think we'll be able to wrap this together and show you how it comes together at the end. Thank you, thank you, Miss Pam. Um, it was yes, it was a wood cutout that a follower friend sent me. Uh, it's just a crow cutout. Well, it could be any kind of bird, I suppose, but for today, it's a little crow. <laughs> for my little project, it's gonna be a crow, but she sent me several different sizes. How amazing would this be for fun? Project. I can't wait to do something with this. I'm thinking like a rusty black crow. I'm thinking. I don't know. Just thinking. All right. So let's bring our can back over here. Drake mix container. We're turning this into a scrappy pumpkin. All right. We need some fabric scraps, you guys. Some fabric scraps. I'm going with a black gingham homespun. I'm using that in a lot of my fall projects, including this little scarecrow that we did earlier in the week. So I'm tying in some of the same color schemes in all of my projects so that these will coordinate together whenever I use them in my home decor. So I've got the little black gingham and then I have a little uh, orange plaid fabric. Those both came from Hobby Lobby, but you could use any kind of fabric you want. Just kind of use repetitive colors and patterns whenever you mix and match things in your home and then everything coordinates so nicely whenever you put it together. Hey Miss Angela from Southeast Ohio. Uh, I, you know, I do not know if Miss Teresa sells them or not. I don't know. I don't think she has a business page, but we can definitely find out. And if not, I can lead you to some ladies who can. <laughs> We've got friends around here that do, uh, that do wood cutouts. Okay, so around the top, let's get some Excelsior. Um, so I'm looking. I, you could use, hmm, should we use Spanish moss or Excelsior? I'm going to let you guys decide because I'm kind of torn. <laughs> I like the texture of Excelsior, 
but I like the color of the Spanish moss. Does that make any sense? I want to use it around my stem. So you guys chime in and tell me what you think would look cute with this. I could grunge this up a little bit to make it a little bit darker. And in fact, sometimes that's what I do. Um, let me grab, oops, wrong colors. Um, I do have some distressing inks that sometimes I use, which I'm probably going to use. Let's see what you got. Moss. I see a moss. I see a moss. Another moss. And while you guys are chiming in on that, I'm going to get one of these distress inks out. Probably going to use the vintage photo. Um, I see moss. I see moss. I see one that says both. I see another moss. Moss looks like it's taken over, you guys. All right, so this is... Uh, Rangers Distress Ink. You can find these at Hobby Lobby online, wherever. But when I do um, some of these, um, when I'm finishing up, to putting the finishing touches on these, I just take, oh, that's a little too strong. Um, I will take this and sometimes I use a little, a little, like a little applicator. This kind of softens the, the look when you apply it take it and just grunge up the edges and that's what I did on that canister I showed you earlier but this will give you some grungy colors around it and I will I will rub this up and down make some streaks make some dark patches and that's how I'll finish it up around the edges okay um I am going to do I still okay we're going to go with the moss you guys have spoken it <laughs> let's use this messy moss <laughs> that's what I call it um Okay, thank you, Miss Deborah. I appreciate you. We're using the moss. Ooh, maybe. Let's cut it. And while I'm thinking about it, when we are finished here today, I always share a photo of the finished uh, project on my page and on my Telegram channel so that you guys can see it, what it looks like. I'm not going to glue that down because I am going to darken that little um, stem. Where'd my crow go? All right, this little crow. Hmm, does he look better? Ooh, look better on the side or on the stem? I think I like it better on the stem. We are going to glue that down. And then I'm going to glue that star. Now, I'm going to glue this on and then I will hide the glue with a little bit more of the Spanish moss around his feet okay now that will probably take a little bit of fussing with to make sure that it sticks okay um, that's what we got okay now maybe oh I think it might stay okay now, I will do the same thing with the little star. I'm going to grunge up the edges with a little bit of that distressing ink. Whoop. No, he wasn't quite ready to stand there on his own. I'm going to grunge up this star a little bit. I'm going to, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to take, let me show you. I think, my plan is anyway, is take some, I'm going to create a little top with some muslin, some scrap muslin. Okay. Nope, those are short pieces. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to use some scrap muslin, tie this around the front, attach the star almost as like a little tag, okay, if you will. Probably add a little bit more Excelsior and probably a little bit more of the black homespun. We're going to finish it off. Uh, next crafter is coming up. You guys come back. Stay tuned. Head over to my Telegram channel. I'm going to send a finished photo. <laughs> of this project. Thanks for helping me work out some of the details today on a last minute craft. You all stay tuned, the next crafter. Thanks so much for joining me. Until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.